review of problem number three from homework assignment number two, which unfortunately is really different from the new book to the old book. The problem is the same, but the molecules that are used in the problem are different from one book to the other. So I'm going to be doing the problems, the molecules that are out of the new book, and it's the same idea for, <clears throat> for the old book. This problem has, ha, gives you A through I structures, and it asks you for each one, or sorry, A through I formulas, and it asks you for each one to draw a Lewis structure and to show the kind of orbitals that overlap to form each bond, and that's what I wanted to review. So one in the new book, one of the structures, a pretty simple one, has the formula NH2 minus, written like that. And so what we want to do is figure out what kind of orbitals overlap in this molecule to, to create the bonding. The way that we're going to figure that out is by drawing the Lewis structure for this molecule, which is going to look like that. I'm going to leave the negative charge off just to simplify it. And what we want to do is figure out what two orbitals are overlapping to make this nitrogen-hydrogen bond and the one over here, which is identical. The way that we do that is identify the hybridization of each atom in the bond. So the hydrogen having just one area of electron density around it, just in this single bond, is, uh, has a hybridization of S. And the nitrogen, which has one, two, three, four areas of electron density around it, is sp3 hybridized. So this means that the, the bonding orbitals, the orbitals that come together to overlap to make this sigma bond, is an s orbital for the hydrogen and an sp3 orbital for the nitrogen. So this bond is a head-to-head -head overlap of an s orbital and an sp3 orbital. And this one is the exact same thing, so we don't need to go through that. Let's do another example. The next one in the new book is CH2OH, which is a cation. And so to figure out the bonding in this, again, we're going to draw its Lewis structure. which looks like that. And we've got several bonds that we want to figure out for this molecule. In order to do that, we have to identify the hybridization of every atom in the molecule. The hydrogen atoms are always going to be S hybridized. They only have one area of electron density around them because they don't follow the octet rule. The carbon atom has one, two, three areas of electron density. So it is sp2 hybridized. And the oxygen atom has one, two, three areas of electron density, so it is also sp2 hybridized. The carbon-hydrogen bond comes from an overlap of hydrogen's s orbital with carbon's sp2 orbital. So this is an s and sp2 overlap. Same with this other carbon-hydrogen bond. The oxygen-hydrogen single bond is going to be an S orbital from the hydrogen overlapping with an sp2 orbital from the oxygen. So that's also going to be an S and an sp2. And the double bond here in the middle, because it's a double bond, it consists of two bonds, a sigma bond and a pi bond. The sigma bond comes from the head-to-head -head overlap of the sp2 with the sp2 from the carbon and the oxygen. So an sp2 to sp2 head-to-head -head overlap is what creates the sigma bond of the pi bond, of the double bond, I apologize. The pi bond of the double bond comes from a side-to-side -side overlap of the unhybridized p orbital on the carbon and the oxygen. Because this the carbon atom, when it hybridizes, and same is true for the oxygen, it only uses three of its atomic orbitals to hybridize. It uses the S and two of its Ps. The third P orbital stays unhybridized on the carbon as well as on the oxygen, and those unhybridized P orbitals overlap to make that double bond. Let's do one more. This one is E from the new book, and it's... Structure is HC, triple bond C, single bond CHO, 
the Lua structure. Looks like this. To identify the bonding for this, we first have to pick out the hybridization. Hydrogen is always going to be S, one area of electron density. This carbon atom has one, two, three areas of electron density, so it's sp2 with one unhybridized p orbital. The oxygen has one, two, three areas of electron density. It's also sp2 with one unhybridized p orbital. This carbon atom has two areas of electron density, so it's sp hybridized with two unhybridized p orbitals. And the same is true for the last carbon atom. So the carbon-hydrogen single bond on the left comes from a head-to-head -head overlap of an S with an SP, S from the hydrogen, SP from the carbon. We're going to skip the triple bond for now. This carbon-carbon single bond comes from a head-to-head -head overlap of an SP orbital with an SP2 orbital. The second carbon-hydrogen bond is a head-to-head -head overlap between sp2 and s. Let's do the carbon-oxygen double bond. Because it's a double bond, it contains a sigma bond, which is going to be a head-to-head -head overlap, and a pi bond, which is going to be above and below overlap. The sigma bond, the head-to-head -head overlap, is going to occur between the sp2 of the carbon and the sp2 of the oxygen. The pi bond of the double bond will come from a side-to-side -side or above and below side-to-side -side overlap of the unhybridized p orbital on the oxygen and the unhybridized p orbital on the carbon. Same as in the last example. And then with the triple bond, a triple bond contains one sigma bond and two pi bonds. The sigma bond comes from the head-to-head -head overlap of the hybridized orbitals. The sigma bonds always are the head-to-head -head overlap of the hybrid orbitals. So this is going to be an sp with an sp. And then the pi bonds, the two pi bonds that are in this triple bond, come from the unhybridized p orbitals overlapping. Pi bonds always come from the unhybridized p orbitals. So we have an sp with an sp, and we have a p with a p, and we have a p orbital with another p orbital.